So who cares what the medium is that puts a smile on your face and makes you enjoy something, right? Why do we have that debate? Let everybody just enjoy what they like in life. Who cares? Like, I don't know why we got to get into this conversation about, I don't give a shit who, who Taylor Swift is dating. Yeah. <laughs> but you've probably done his action figure. Oh no, we got one coming up. We do. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rockman Power Hour, a podcast where we talk to the most interesting people in the world of pop culture, movies, comic books, and toys, and everything in between. The reason why I'm saying comic book, movies, toys, and everything in between, the gentleman that we are having on the podcast with us today is someone that has been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, made the toy, made the TV series, made the movie, and set records. His name is Todd McFarlane, and we have him on the podcast with us today. I am so excited, Ryan, about having Todd on the podcast. We had him on early on when we started it mm. was really really quick interview but that was a meal this was this is a this is no that was a that snack was, that this was a snack a, this is a meal this is the whole meal this is like you know this is, this like, is a seven course meal this is a 42 ounce vegan steak okay but we wouldn't be able to do this without our friends over at heartbeat hot sauce the heartbeat of the rockman power hour um thank you so much to them check them out at heartbeathotsauce.com and use our promo code rockman20 and you'll get 20 percent off your entire order uh they've got a brand new sauce that i'm looking to get very very soon uh that they did with the very famous chef laurent dagenet and we're gonna have mm -hmm. him on the podcast too soon cool. uh, a lot of great stuff going on with them and of course their fighter dustin poirier winning at ufc 299 that was big news so uh love heartbeat hot sauce thank you to them thank you to our friends at studio house designs as well and a big shout out to doyle wolfgang von frankenstein this is a collaboration he did with uh the company that makes famous monster uh, merchandise oh, so yeah. it's uh that's yeah. right this is uh i've been wearing this shirt so much i think it can clearly count as my skin now yeah so uh yeah it's uh you know i'm pulling on my skin so here we go <laughs> i love it i love it and um thank you to our new friends that are joining mm -hmm. us on the podcast audio technica uh ryan this is going to be officially the first episode that we're doing with our new microphones our new headphones yeah and all this great gear so thank you to mike marino and audio technica canada we'll talk more about that later on in the podcast but ryan i don't want to wait any longer um no. i am so excited about this we've got todd mcfarlane on the last time we had him on we were not able to talk as a group so i'm really happy you're here i know you're excited about it so uh words cannot describe the excitement i'm feeling right now all right, so let's just dive into this right now. Without any further ado, our conversation with Todd McFarlane, all about the 30th anniversary of McFarlane Toys. It's it's nice to talk to you again. The last time we chatted was um, was Venom. We we spoke briefly during Venom because they, I guess, it was done through Sony, and they gave me like 10 minutes with you, but we didn't really get to chat chat. And I'm glad we were able to talk today because. Um, Shannon had reached out and she said, would you like to have Todd on your podcast? And I met Shannon in a very interesting way. Um, and I want to just set that up before, uh, before I, I bring you in here, but this is my, this is my uh, co-host Ryan. Right hey, Matt, Ryan, what are you doing? The, who's got the beautiful blonde locks. <laughs> looking sassy, looking sassy. Looks good. Uh, right? Only for you, Todd, only for you before, uh, before we got on, I kind of looked like I lived with sandworms and now I, now I look like I'm after the spice. Official, when, I get, when I get topical official, official sandworms um <laughs> so i um so just to qualify to let you know a little bit about my history with because we are here to talk to you today about uh about mcfarland toys um okay. and uh, i want to give you a little bit of my history with mcfarland toys which is an interesting one um obviously ryan and i been a fan of your of your work for a long time as comic book fans you know but mcfarland toys um, I remember I was on the Ozfest in 2000. Oh, wow. And, um, I'll never forget being a fan of your stuff. I believe a couple of years before that the kiss figures had come out and they were the first kiss figures to come out since the original 12 inches. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then when I found out that there was an Ozfest kiosk 
with through with McFarland Toys on every stop of the tour, I was very very excited because the guys that were working the the uh, kiosk were giving me toys all the time, and there was there was so many rad rad promo things um, that were around all of that. You know, it was the time when you were doing the Austin Powers stuff. You had done the Aussie doll. You had done, I believe you had done the Rob Zombie stuff. So it was, um, it was such a treat to be on that tour all summer and talk with the people that were working in the McFarland kiosk. So I had a relationship with Aussie because we were the band, we were on Aussie's label. So fast forward, these guys who I'm friends with, really good friends with, mm. um, reached out to me and they're like, I saw you spoke to Todd McFarland on your podcast about Venom. Could you do me a favor? Is there any way you could get us in touch with them? And I'm like, I don't know, man. Like I'd have to see. So I reached out to my buddy, John Fenton, who works for Ozzy. And I was like, I know Todd just did an alternate cover for Ozzy's record. Can you get me in touch? Put me in touch with Shannon. I got to know Shannon a little bit. We had a call. Um, then you met the Zarface guys. And that's how I got to meet Shannon. So having said that, she's been an amazing, amazing um, contact for me. Just, just to follow up on what you've been doing, but she's such a, huge supporter of what you do. And she's always filling me in saying, you know, Todd's got this going on. He's doing this Comic-Con. We're involved, Ryan and I are involved with some Comic-Cons here in Canada, oh, Montreal, okay. Ottawa, Winnipeg. So we've been talking about maybe trying to get you up here eventually. But when she said, do you want to have Todd on the podcast to talk about McFarland toys? I was like, hell yes. Because your toys are a whole other ball game. You literally change the face of toys. And you know that, right? You, you sound like my mom now. <laughs> thanks, mom. You thanks, mom, making your boy feel good today. So, but you really, uh, but you did, you did. Um, here, uh, uh, yes, that was part of the intent. Okay, that was part of the intent. But uh, again, it's it's theoretical at the beginning, right? So you're look at the the task at the beginning was 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 sort of simple. Can I make sort of cooler looking toys? Period. Then if that succeeded, then there was the second thought was, will this help show and create a blueprint for others to follow? And if others follow, then the industry as a whole, the whole, you know, tide sort of raising all the boats, there should be a little bit of that, right? So yeah. it, it, when when we first started and we were doing things that other people weren't doing in, in the toy side of yeah. of things, it was a it was I think it was a way bigger lightning bolt, right? And now, I mean, because I could go to Toy Fair and maybe see three toys I was jealous of, right? Okay. Maybe, maybe. But now, fast forward, right? We're now celebrating our thirtieth anniversary. Now I can go to San Diego or New York or any of the toy fairs, and there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of toys that I just go, oh, my gosh, oh, my God. So mm -hmm. it, at some point, people just need to see examples succeed, right? Yeah, this, is, right. This, is the part, this is the part that I sort of have to say out loud a little bit. I make no apologies for any success we've had. And it's not because I need, I want to be rich and famous. It's not that piece of it. Uh, my 15 minutes of fame lasted way longer and I'm getting too old for that. I'm over me. But you need the success because success opens the next doors for you and the next opportunities. And so I keep saying to people, I go start a business, fail at your first three things and then walk in the door and tell people you failed and ask them to do you a favor. It just doesn't happen, right? Yeah. People and businesses want to hang out with people who have a track record. You know, at, at the beginning, I had to beg, bore, and steal and get people to sort of go, why should we buy your stuff and whatever else? Uh, and then eventually, you know, the sales proved that they they could work. You could do brands that people were not even coming close to touching. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, it was like, oh, so there's more than one way to skin this cat. Basically, in its simplest, that's all it was. Right, I wasn't doing anything wholly original that anybody at that time couldn't have done themselves. That's the that's the piece I have to tell you that is the most odd. That that and you were kind saying some nice words. I didn't. We didn't do anything that couldn't have been done twenty years prior. That's the bizarre thing. And so I I, I come along and I do 
what I'm just going, why don't we just make them look cooler? It's just clay. And we, and we just kept doodling on it till there was more detail, but they had clay too for the last yeah. 50, 80 years. Like I, like this is, they had paint too. They had subject matter too. They just chose not to use it in the same fashion. I don't know why. And, and again, why? I don't know. Let me say running a, the toy business now, I actually do know why. Yeah. Because they're in the billion dollar business of selling to moms and six year olds. That's, that's their groove. Sure, and it's, a, it's a hell of a groove. And so I was able to find another groove where there was nobody really there. Now, I mean, now there's lots of people, so that's cool. And start saying, guys, you don't like, there's not, there's only, there's not one way to make a toy. There's not one way to make a toy, right? As much as they poo pooed me. Uh, and that was it. That was sort of the start of it. And, and we showed that there's options. That's all, that's all I, that's all I am, that there's a, another possibility out there if you want to do something. Same on the toy front, we did, or in the comic book front. We just showed, if you don't want to work for Marvel and DC, there's another option, right? right. So right. that's it. No, speaking of, uh, you mentioned skinning a cat. Uh, the first toy I ever thought about keeping in a box, and this is a year before, this is years before that movie, 40 year old virgin really gave me an idea about keeping all the toys in the boxes. I'm like, you know, I'm watching that movie. I'm like, I know it's called 40 year old virgin, but that's a really good idea. Everything looks awesome. But, that back, looks awesome. but back in the day, you were mentioning also that uh, toys, you know, this is for the moms and the six year olds. It's not every day that someone starts a toy collection at 13, but the first toy I ever bought and thought I got to keep this in a box is was a Peter Chris uh, toy from the first kiss line oh, yeah. because, because I thought the detail was just so incredible. I'm like, oh, this is this is a big boys toy. Look, and look I think most of I look at I think that collecting and being a collector of toys would have been bigger if they were making toys cooler i i, mm -hmm. I so because again you know i i mean i'm a i'm a i'm i'm a big geek and 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 a psycho sports fan and i wouldn't buy one of the kenner starting lineup toys i don't care i don't care if it was my favorite player because yeah. it just didn't look like them and i go i'm not giving you my money for some faux bad version of my favorite guy won't do it. So the reason that people came on board is that I'm guessing that there were, there were a million Todd McFarlane's out there. They just didn't either have the art chops or the money. If they had the art chops to be able to get it off the ground, to be able to do it. But everybody, I couldn't have been the only person walking down up and down that action figure aisle going, Man, can't they do better than this? Yeah, right? Yeah. Of course, of course, of course. It's just mm -hmm. that somebody comes along, I happen to be the guy, and 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 actually put it into physical form to go, well, how about like this? Uh, and people responded. Be, like, so the older people like yourself, you responded because what were your options really at that point, right? Even for me, what were my options? Even if I wanted to buy Marvel and superhero Batman, Superman, they still were sort of, you know, little, little simplistic in their execution. Uh, and it was like, why, why? And the answer was because they have to maximize profits and they're selling to six year olds and moms. And neither one of those are, are have a high bar of art. Superman mm -hmm. equals an S on his chest, some, some, some blue pajamas and a red cape. That's it. As long as you sort of get those three checkpoints. Yeah. Like you can sell it. You can sell it where I knew that I was going to be selling to 14 and up. And mm -hmm. if I didn't make it look like the TV show or the baseball card or the video game or the movie or whatever it was that, that we were making a uh, license of at some point, then, then I was going to hear from people because I'm not, it's not a six year old. Now I'm actually talking to somebody who's not even buying it for a gift mm -hmm. or for a holiday or for a birthday. They're actually buying it for themselves. And they have a they have they have a high expectation of me getting it right, so yeah, and a and a shelf life because the whole point of the toys and like I said, we kept it in the box. My one of my best friends in the world, uh, bi well, we call him Big Dave because he's big, but his girlfriend calls him Big Strong Man, and he and he hates it. So if you could call him Big Strong Man at least once during this, that'd be fucking hilarious. Anyway, um, so uh, Big Dave, he uh, he's 
he has a massive spawn collection, whether if it's the tattoos on his own skin or the statues or everything, there's a quality that ages with people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's not buying these toys out of nostalgia. Like, you know, Oh, I love this. I love this show. Uh, sorry. I love this toy as a kid. Yeah. It's not that great, but you know, it meant a lot to me back then. There's a pride that comes with this. And the fact that you made you geared toys towards older people made the fact that, you know, we're almost 40. He's still buying spawn toys and it's, and it's not out of novelty or not out of nostalgia. It is out of like, like I said, out of pride. Look at, I look at here. Let me just say one thing. I, I, I think you can sell a toy to anybody. Sure. Right? I, the, the, the difference is, you just have to have the right content. Mm -hmm. So, so if you guys uh, remember, um, maybe not both of you, but uh, like when Blockbuster was in its heyday, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. You could take you could take a five year old. You, I could go in my five year old, me, and then my mom. So, so the five year old's grandma, right? And you'd walk in, and you go, go rent a movie, and everybody would go to a different aisle. Right. Mm -hmm. One would go to the kids one. I go to the drama. My mom would go to the romantic comedies, whatever it was. And then we'd meet back. And then, you know, it was all sort of the same format with a shiny little flat disc. But what was different was the content. So so all I did was going, we're going to make action. But now if I make it with aliens or predator or kiss or the X files or some of the other stuff I or some of the crazy ideas we just were coming up with, then I knew that that wasn't supposed to appeal to the moms or the six-year-old and it wasn't supposed to appeal to my mom it was supposed mm -hmm. to appeal to like a certain group if i wanted to sell a toy to my mom i would have made it look like tom jones she loved <laughs> tom jones right so as long as i did engelbert humperdinck and tom jones maybe a little i, I could have sold something to my mom so it, right. I, I just need the right content for the target group that you're going for. And I was going for kind of for to, to, to I think once you're a geek, you can sort of die kind of yeah, cool. Right. Sure. So four to four to death, four to, 14 to death. And I, but I knew that to get that, I, I had to do what was the cool thing that was happening this weekend on ca college campuses. I needed, I needed to basically try and find those categories. And mm -hmm. those were categories that the big, Fortune 500 companies, because they have a model that makes them billions that doesn't look at that, I think was underserving people. And so, so toys, I know that there's a misconception like, oh, you know, adults collect toys. Here's what toys are when adults collect them. They're the same thing as me wearing a hat or wearing a shirt like you. You got your monster shirt or you got your ex. You're just basic. It's just. You're just telling people what you like, yeah. right? So yeah. it's either I'm telling you here, I'm telling you here, or I'm telling you on my shelf. But right. it's the same thing. When we were a kid, they used to say, you could tell a lot by person by going through their garbage. I, I think it's the modern version is you can tell a lot by people by either seeing what's behind them in Zoom or going into their cubicle at the office. Or, or you know, they used to say you could tell a lot from going uh, from somebody by going through their record collection. Right. I mean, it's the same kind of thing. It's just, it's letting your your, your flag fly. Right. It doesn't mean you're on your hands and knees banging together and playing. No. Right. It means that if you've got one of my Ted Lasso toys sitting in your cubicle, it doesn't mean you're mentally arrested. It means that you just happen to like that show. And if somebody who's walking by your cube goes, oh, Mary, is that Ted Lasso? Yeah. You watch that show? Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. And all of a sudden you're in a conversation just like your shirt. Oh my gosh, I didn't know you like that. I like that too. Like, and you just get in, they're just conversation starters. They're nothing beyond that. You everybody's like what people who don't do it are putting their six-year-old brain on it instead yeah. of something else, right? I I I don't it's frustrating because it's like you're looking at it the wrong way from what we're doing, right? We enjoy this because it it reminds us of some of the stuff that put a smile on our face right uh, so i don't know i like and everybody does it let me just tell you everybody does it to some extent right it's just that the, the old people who don't get it like go i don't understand you know whippersnappers why they do that i don't get to get it right but they just do it they just don't know it. they just do it with their phone yeah. right they take, they take damn photos and then they they look at the photos of their grandkids and they go oh man that puts a smile on my face man that's really cool like so 
who cares what the medium is that puts a smile on your face and makes you enjoy something, right? Why do we have that debate? Let everybody just enjoy what they like in life. Who cares? Like, I don't know why we got to get into this conversation about, I don't give a shit who, who Taylor Swift is dating. Yeah. <laughs> but you've probably done his action figure. Oh no, we got one coming up. We do. <laughs> Right. But but I'm just saying whether I do care or I don't care, yeah. it's no relevant to her life. So I don't know why yeah. I'm even spending any time. Like, I don't know. I'll worry about my own date today. Right. Yeah. Like, no, no, definitely. No. Definitely. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah. But people, people are funny. People are funny. And that's like, OK, so look, I I'll take criticism all day long. Right. I, and, 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 and I think it's it's fair. The piece that crosses the line for me is when people want to censor something. That's a whole, that's a whole nother, like you don't like Ozzy's music. Fine. Don't buy it. But yeah. if you say that it shouldn't be allowed to exist, that's, that's when the hair comes up and I just go now, now, now we're going to get in a fight. Right. So mm. just don't you personally take it home and do it. Look, at I've only had one line for critics my entire life. No matter how simple the criticism or how complicated and 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 sort of intense the criticism was, once they're done, tap them on the shoulder if I'm near them, and I just say the same thing for thirty years. You should spend your time and money on things you personally enjoy. Right, right. Yeah. Problem solved. You can. This is a you problem. You can actually solve this. If you don't like that show, don't watch it. Yeah. If you don't like that music, don't 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 listen to it. Go find stuff that you like. If you don't want to buy toys, don't buy toys. But it doesn't mean that other people can't enjoy something that you personally don't enjoy, right? So yeah. I, it's a weird it's a weird thing. So, but being the um, you know uh, being like you mentioned, you're a sports fan. Uh, I remember you know you've done some incredible stuff with you know with all the leagues, great stuff. Football, um, baseball, basketball, hockey, yeah, everything. Um, but one of the coolest ones to me as a Canadian uh, and, as a, and as a fan of hockey uh, was when you did the Hanson brothers. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. That's how, right. What, what, <laughs> now I guess as a B and I'm sure you were, you know, you're a fan of slap shot. Um, yep. Was it, was it satisfying for you to, to do, a figure like that, that necessarily wasn't a professional sports figure, but was so endearing to so many sports fans. Yeah. Um, well, there's sort of two toys that we make that I make. There's the toy that you make because you know, it's popular, right? Oh, video game X. I don't play it, but I know a ton of people do. Let's go and make it. We do the best we can. If it turns out cool, I like it. And then there's the other bucket, which is, Oh, we're going to make this thing. And Oh, by the way, I personally kind of, Kind of dig it, right? So, right. Um, yeah, we 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 did slap shot. Uh, we did uh, Bob and Doug McKenzie, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> was, uh, yeah. with, with the sound chips in it. Yep. Um, even even some of the Austin Power because Mike Mike's a, a Canadian guy, so you know a little bit of a little bit of fun there. So yeah, it's okay. And I'm I'm a big uh, Wayne Gretzky fan, so all of a sudden I'm going, man, we're making Wayne Gretzky, super cool. Yeah, sometimes you get to enjoy it yourself and just go, okay, I don't care if this only breaks even at best, right? I, this thing just has to exist someplace. And luckily, to your point, there's there's tons of us out there, right? There were, yeah. like we're in every corner and there's plenty of us sort of hanging out in the corners in the shadows so that when these sort of cool, fun things come out, right, people just go... And then they go and, and they sort of disappear or whatever. But I got to tell you that that set of toys was one of the ones that people hounded me for a while. I was like going, I couldn't get the set or I couldn't get the arena. I wanted the arena and I couldn't get the net and whatever. Like and they, <laughs> they, they busted me for a while on that because it did better than I thought. Yeah. Amazing. Um, I the, the folks over at McFarland Toys sent sent us a few things here uh, that we wanted to show and talk about. Um, I kept this one. Ryan hasn't seen any of these yet. No, I haven't. One in particular that I know he's going to be very excited about, and I know it's a newer one, so I wanted you to speak about this. But obviously, uh, Detective Comics 27, such an important comic book. Yeah. Know, for comic book fans. Um, Ryan, I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, shit. 
Okay, but that like so you see that yeah. Uh, look at that, Ryan. Oh fuck yeah, yeah. Ryan. Oh, he's got you... the long ears and everything. Yeah, and the purple and, and the purple fist. The purple yeah, yeah, fist, no, the purple the... fist. That that is a big part right? of that. Uh, I know yeah. that. I know that people are going to look at that from the front and go. Nobody messed up at the factory, right? I know. Well, that's the thing. No, no. I, I have a Ninja Turtle painting off camera that my friend made that has all the red masks. And everybody who comes in here, like, there's about seven out of ten people. They're like, oh, why are all the why are they all Raphael? And I'm like, no, no, no. In the original graphic novels, yeah. they all had red yeah. masks. Yeah. So, Todd, I love the fucking detail. Sorry for swearing. No, you I, love, swear. the, I love the podcast. detail of the of the purple gloves because that that's just for all those people that remember that run or just they buy that stuff. Those are the things that make it stand out. There could be a hundred thousand Batman figures, but that little thing you're like, I've never seen the purple gloves on any Batman, anything besides on the drawn page. Okay. But Ryan, you're the, the thing is, is like, if you turn it around, okay. If you turn around there, Jason, like it's, it's not that I did anything out of the ordinary. I just did what was, what was staring me in the face. Right. right. So right. at some point my, our goal what we have to do is try to get it as right as possible, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, I, again, the I mean, even the ears, right? The ears yeah. are a little goofy, sort of like you've seen those ones, like a bad cost Halloween costume, right? But again, this is based on. For people who don't know, Detective Twenty Seven is the first appearance of Batman ever, nineteen thirty eight, yeah. ever. So he was his raw. Is it was ever going to be drawn at that point, and he just got refined over the years. So we have to try and give form to something that was maybe overly simplistic at that time, right? If you actually have seen interior pages of the comic books, which it was, um, but that's okay. Batman fans who are in the know, and this is where being a geek kind of cool, yeah. right? That you know yeah. that it's like there's a reason for stuff. These are our little Easter eggs, and it's okay if everybody doesn't sort of join the club. Yeah, and the wrench and all that, all this stuff. So it's really cool. Ryan, this is for you, by the way. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> all right. That's well, awesome. There's another one I want to show. And I think it's a cloth cape, so you can actually sort of flare it out like that, too. So, so check that out. Oh, so can you can nice. you talk a bit about King Spawn and Demon Minions? Whoa. Yeah. So well, sometimes uh you know, we do the bigger box trying to give just a little bit more value, a little yeah. bit more of a presence when it's on your shelf, right? Yeah. Big time. Um so and again, we've done spawn now for, you know, I mean the company was founded on spawn figures. Right. So we're always trying to look for sort of different angles and with the comic book now sort of past 350 issue 350 so there's a lot to sort of draw from and we're just going man what can we do that would look cool still be spawn uh but be but be fun to sort of be able to manipulate and whatever else so uh that that was it it's like he you know again the spawns are hell spawns so you you sort of give them a little bit of that look and then you put the little sort of creatures around them the little minions there and, uh, and again, to me, there's a, people like to set up like a selfie a little bit. You know, you, you yeah. get your angle, you get to pick your and you go there. There's the shot. Right. Mm -hmm. People want to sort of do the same with their collection, their toys, especially once, they're, once they get them out of the box. And the more things you can give them to set up, if you will, uh, the, the I think that they enjoy it, which is why they're willing to sort of pay a little bit higher if you if you add more value and more them. yeah and and like when you look at it i mean again the detail in this is great i think all and you know you don't you can't see when you when you look at it from far but i mean it's got like an yeah. arsenal of weapons behind it <laughs> no, and, and, and I, 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 again you might not see it too that the it's got the wings right that take up yeah and then like there's a base behind it like if you turn it like to the top sometimes Sadly, we put so much, you can't even see everything that's in there. You have yeah, to sort of like, like, there's like oh, a whole, there's a wall of weapons behind there, Ryan. Yeah. There's there's, yeah. And I hate that sometimes I go, man, they don't know. Like I like my theory is show them as much plastic as you can. Yeah. yeah, because, yeah. Because yeah. Then, then they know that they're, they're getting it. And if you hide the plastic, just like if you hide the chocolate, then they don't know that the chocolate bars got 15 ounces instead of 12. Cause it only looks like 12. So I hate when we just, the box is so small. I've got to, I've got to cover up stuff yeah. behind it. And I'm going, man, there's like 10 things behind that body. But what are you going to do? So, 
So you got any more? <laughs> I got one. I got one more. <laughs> but and I also have some other stuff I want to talk about. But this one's really interesting because this is um this is like this is promoting McFarland Toys Digital. Oh so, wow. So it's a little bit different. Tell me a bit about this one, Todd. So so I'm you know, I mean again, we've been doing the physical both with the comic books and uh and toys mm-hmm. forever, right? Yeah, and yeah. you know, 10, 15 years ago, I mean this thing is sort of weird. 10, 15 years ago, we went uh, digital comic books. Uh, you know, I mean, lots of things are digital downloads now, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but the, the uh, so you've got this sort of area now that I don't, I don't really refer to it as like NFTs, although that's a sort of official sort of term for it. I just sort of call it digital art, right? right. And the digital art. And there's sort of this group of people who are really dedicated and hardcore towards it, right? And so, mm-hmm. again, it's one of these conversations, which is, again, a really odd one where people can get really emotional about digital art, NFTs, and stuff like that. Like, you go, why would I want to buy it? Why would I? Like, again, I, I well, then don't, right? Like, mm-hmm. But somebody else is going to is gonna do it. And so what, and I try to explain them, I try to reason with them a little bit, which is, you know, A, there are some people who live in this, world where if they try to buy a toy yeah and i su- and i send it to them the shipping on that toy is like 120 bucks for right. like a 15 dollar toy right. i mean i'm telling you i'm not exaggerating that depending where you live that's a truism oh yeah yeah so no people, no so, yeah. so people then go that live in those places go i can't really afford it i can't really afford it the counter to that is that if you live in a place like Tokyo, Japan, Mm -hmm. and your apartment is 400 square feet, you can't have anything that resembles a meaningful collection Mm -hmm. if you want a fridge and a toilet, right? (laughs) So you don't have space. So some people it's costly. So so you have two choices. You can either lock those people out and go, you're not you're not allowed to come to the to the geek to the geek party, or you can figure out another way and the easy way is digital right also that person doesn't have to spend 120 dollars. i can just digitally send it to them that other person doesn't have to basically say i bought three toys and my apartment's full you can he can have a thousand items they're just digitally and the old people <laughs> and old people are funny but the old people uh sit there and i go i don't get it i don't understand it's digital why would anybody want it why would anybody I don't understand what the value is and everybody's doing it. And it's like, and here's the thing that's crazy. Going back to my phone, every critic does it. This is the, this is the moment when I stop them. And when they get like at their hottest moment, I go, well, you do it. Yeah. And then they stop and go, no, no. What, what, what are you talking about? I go, no, you do it. What we're talking about, you do. Like, cause they're like, that toy is not really the real toy. And I go here, give me your phone for a second. And I, I get their phone and I scroll their phone and I go, let me just see here. And I go, oh man, look at this. Here's a picture. Here's a picture of your grandkid. Let me just sort of show. So let me just show you something. You know that's not your fucking grandkid, right? You know that <laughs> it's just a digital replica of your grandchild, right? Mm-hmm. But yet, when you look at that replica, it puts a smile on your face right. and it gives mm-hmm. you memories and you enjoy looking at that digital image. So. All I'm asking you, why can't somebody else look at a digital image, mm-hmm. right? Like, why can you do it and somehow it's okay and somebody else does it and somehow it's stupid, Yeah. right? Get up, get, get past yourself, get past yourself. This is just the world we live in. And oh, by the way, here's how the world works on a, on a, on a, on a capitalist society. If people buy it, then you probably did more things right than wrong. And if people don't buy it, then you probably got it wrong. You don't have to tell me what you like and don't like. You just have to either support it or not. Right. Every time any consumer buys anything, they are literally voting without having to go and write an email. You're mm-hmm. voting with your dollars. And if you don't buy something, then you're also voting saying, I don't like it. I'm not going to buy it. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's okay. But here's the thing. Here's the, here's the misconception. I'm not looking for 8 billion people. To like everything that I do. That's the false thing that you guys are getting worked up. I need enough to be able to do it again tomorrow. Right. And if we can find enough people to be able to do it again tomorrow, then eventually I can just string enough of those together. I got like months, then years, then decades. 
and it's okay. I don't need all of you. All of you don't have, it's okay that everybody doesn't like what I do. That's fine. I've, I've been fortunate enough though, to have a steady flow of enough people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and now we're 30, 40 years into some of the careers. Good, good. They, they all think like, and here's the other thing too, mom and rabbi, I wasn't really aiming for you. That's why they call it the target audience. Yeah. You're, actually, you're trying to hit the target. And a lot of times I actually think I'm a pretty good sharpshooter. I actually think I hit my target. Yeah. Thing is, when you see that target, the one that you see in the Looney Tunes, it's got the, the black dot and it's got the red and the white circles right around it, right? Yeah. You guys actually thought I was trying to hit one of the red or the white circles? Mm? No, I was hitting the black bullseye, right? You're 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 part you're part of one of those other bands, right? I wasn't trying to get every rabbi to buy the stuff that I'm making. That's not that wasn't my goal. I'm trying to get like cool people to do stuff and buy it that like it. That's it. So yeah. like, I don't need, I don't need all of you. That's fine. That's fine. You can go and buy your own stuff. That's cool. I'm good. I guess throughout your entire career, you've actually had to deal with that. Whether if it was uh, people trying to tell you, Hey, uh, you know, don't make your own creative stuff. Just keep drawing Spider-Man and, uh, you know, earn a living. Don't have a, an adult rated animated series. <laughs> like I'm sure you people have been giving you guff all the, your entire career. Oh, I, did. I used to we used to make we used to make the top ten horrible toys every year from some reverend guy up in Boston that would come out at Christmas time, whatever else. And it was like people go, How do you feel? I remember we used to do interviews, like, how do you feel you got through your toys in the top ten and you got the number one? And I was like, Man, well, I don't I had some other ones I should I thought should have made it. Right? Mm -hmm. Like I should have had like five out of the ten spots. It's ridiculous. Oh, by the way, by the way news lazy news people um why are you giving credit to that person anyway you, you know what it takes to be a reverend mm. you might want to google it 35 dollars. 35 dollars. you can self-anoint yourself to be a reverend so being a reverend that's nothing that's like saying i'm a cubs fan i, right. I can i can just be whatever i want right mm. so oh and by the way it's always interesting he only cares about sort of the moral safety of children uh in december doesn't seem to care about them the other 11 months right so <laughs> an odd an odd thing that you end up doing and then I, I remember one time too we had a toy based on a comic book frank miller did called sin city yeah of course it, 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 was, it was this cool one marv was the main character and he's sitting in his lecture chair it's sort of the ending of of, of the big book and anyways, what ends up happening with this toy was like you press the button and the whole thing would vibrate because he's, he's in the electric chair. Yeah. And he and he's got going. Dee -dee 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 -dee. And then I, I think this, the line is something like, is that the best you've got? Right. <laughs> and that, because that was the line in the comic book. Um, and then I made some ads he's saying, you know, for all you frustrated workers, you can do this to your boss. Right. And so because again, I was a boss. <laughs> so I'm like going, I gave one to every one of my employees here whenever you're. <laughs> Frustrated with me, just hit this button. Hit the button. That's great. It's a, but all of a sudden, man, there was a group of people got really weird. And then Amnesty America got really weird on me. Okay. Uh, and I'm just like, what? And then they go, we're going to like, and somehow I was on the phone with the somebody, one of the head of Amnesty America and then Amnesty UK or something like that. Now, I here's the thing that's always interesting. I would assume if you're the head of anything, like you're the head of the Aussie fan club, you should probably know almost more than most people you're talking to. 100%. I don't know why you're the, the head of it. So I'm on the phone with them and I go, hey, I understand you want to have a conversation. And their opening salvo was, we find these toys disgusting. And what's the, what are you going to do next? You can do a toy about a guy raping somebody. That's the kind of violence you like. And I had to like pause for a minute going, wow, this is going to be a short phone call, I guess. Um, Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, can I can I just and I don't know why I've got to actually tell you this, but let me just see if I can clear this up. You understand that rape is a crime, that 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 rape is illegal, that rape is illegal. Did you know executing human beings? You know that not only is it legal, the government does it for us. That's how legal it is, right? So are you comparing an illegal criminal act? with a government sanctioned 
uh, 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 activity? Is that, is, is that your apples to apples conversation we're going to start here? Like, come on, like at least, at least give me something. And, this, and these are the silly conversations that you have because people just get emotional. Yeah. And the answer is then just don't buy it. And here's the thing that, and you guys know this to be true, especially with music. The yeah. moment you tell a group of people, don't buy that, that record, it's, it's got foul language. It's no good. Like, what are yeah. you talking Come on. It's like, it's like, no, everybody wants to buy it. Yeah. You just created a sellout. You just created a sellout. What are you talking about? It's done. Never tell teenagers you can't have something because it bugs their parents. Like, done. Right. So I, I, I don't know. And, and, and the depth of the conversations is, like I said, with the, with the NFTs, like, I, 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 I would like to have a deeper conversation in 30 seconds, but that's mm. your best. I, I'm going to have to move on, right? So $35 reverence. You guys don't know the difference between uh, legal and illegal. And and uh, you guys are going to poo-poo stuff that you guys are ready to, like, whatever. I he, 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 Here's the thing that's really what, that, again, back to the whole thing. I told people before that, like, a lot of my, a lot of my sort of life, theory it comes from a commercial that i watched when i was a little kid uh and i watched it wait i watched tv way too much uh and this cool guy badass dude cool hat look at me because the commercial came on all the time and he'd look at me about five times a day and he'd go only you can prevent forest fires <laughs> and i and and, when, and like the seven-year-old todd thought that he was talking about forest fires and then by the time i got to eight maybe eight and a half I just go, you know what? He's actually, I don't think he's talking about forest fire. I think he's talking about personal responsibility. So it's like, huh. So if I don't like chocolate ice cream, then it's on me to not eat it. And then I'll never have to complain about it. <laughs> but so, and so, and it was, that was it. So this is it with the products that I, I don't know why people want to spend time telling people about why they don't like something. It's, it's, it seems like it's a lot of energy that is kind of wasted. Like just go find something you like and, and write about that. I don't know. It seemed like that'd be more productive, but that's, that's silly Canadian thought. So. For the 30th anniversary of, of McFarland toys, um, you guys are going to be doing some special $30 toys. Um, there's going to be a bunch of stuff to celebrate that. Can you tell me a bit about this, the stuff that's planned for the next year? Um, well, just in, in general, again, because it is the 30th anniversary that began officially last month, uh, we have we have sort of a list of ideas we want to do, everything from sort of reintroducing where we can, like sort of old retro packaging, some of the stuff that basically put us on the map, um, some, some of the old sort of retro characters, um, sometimes taking newer characters but putting them in sort of the retro packaging and or factor form a little yeah. bit uh that's there and just m mixing and matching a little bit of it i mean we we sort of did a little bit with the superpowers which was this super simple line of toy i mean i i, I was like oh man these are the toys i used to rail against this look <laughs> yeah and here i am here i am making them now and they're a success uh but <laughs> Uh, but the, the part of the fun of it, besides going back to the the classics of something like a superpower, is that you can now take characters that DC has created since, right. put them in that form, right, and and they kind of look cool for people who like that because you can only buy so many Batman, Superman, Flash, and 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 Wonder Woman's, right, and then and then you need you need to expand it. But now you can do a Red Hood, right, yeah. or you can do a Tim Blake Robin or something or like that. Or a peacemaker like John Cena, peacemaker. I had just right. saw that one. That was great. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So you I, again, and 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 now you, it's like being able to dip into their vault of characters all over again, right? right. Um, and you just go. Arguably, there's thousands to pick from, so we could keep this thing going for till day I die, pretty much, right? There, there's no lack of it if people are willing to go for a right. I mean, look at Funko does it essentially. They yeah. got their they got their shape. And then they just find the brand and they put it on the shape. So and you know, it, it's funny when you, you you mentioned. I was going to mention pops are really. It's interesting because there again, you're you're looking at that and you're like, they're not doing anything different. And that, there was always a chance to do that. And there were bobbleheads, but they just got a, a look that just 
made sense. And, and man, like it just caught on and a, a buddy of mine uh, commented on it. He goes, you know, the one thing about Funkos is they're kind of like chips. You have one, if you open up a bag of chips, you can't just have one fucking chip. And why, when you dip into, when you dip into Funko pops, you can't just get one, you end up getting a wall of them and you're like, what the fuck have I done? So <laughs> it's a great business model for them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. I, I, again, uh, uh, Funko is interesting because again, a, a bit jealous on them of the number of brands they get. Yeah. Right. Because I, you know, it took me to 26 years to even get like to do Batman, like forever. I was like, going, man, I'm never going to do Marvel, DC, and Star Wars, right? Like all, like the big three, right? Every, and it seemed like everybody, every time I went to Toy Fair, everybody had a piece of the action. Sure. And I was like sort of the 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 sort of stepchild off in the corner and going, oh man, I guess I'll just have to do my own stuff. But we, in 2020, were able to do the DC uh, multiverse, but it's hard getting licenses. But now the one thing that Funko has done that's smart is that they've now convinced everybody, especially in Hollywood, that you have to have one of right. your brand. Otherwise, your brand isn't legit. So so because they, they, they cut the pie up so much. And so there's always a space then for them to come in and do it, right? Where um, And they sort of have their own lane, if you will, which, which makes it uh, a little bit easier where, you know, sometimes when I'm, going a lot of times when i'm going after brands i'm i'm going after i'm up against fortune 500 companies yeah. at times right and it's like mm -hmm. so there's the, or there's other art houses that are trying to do uh what i'm doing and you're you get into pretty steep competition with it and you don't always win um and then you go oh man it would have been cool or you know funko i'm like man they could do everything i'm jealous they could do everything so except for spawn so has there ever has there ever been a um let's say a movie or a property that you wanted that you didn't get that you're like man one day i'm gonna get to do that your white whale yeah um not not really i i i would would my sort of delusion that i have is more sort of lower in height but spread out more uh which is i wish that every contract, every every master toy license contract had a paragraph at the end of it, no matter who signed it, that said, and dot, 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 McFarland Toys gets to make one figure of this brand. Just one. Yeah. Mm. I, I, like, just give me one Star Wars. Give me one Marvel. I used to say it before, give me one DC. Eventually, I got it. Yeah. Right? Give me, give me one Transformer. Let me make one G.I. Joe or something. Like, let me just... Let me just show you what I can do at that scale, seven inches at that scale. Uh, although, I mean, we're doing now Transformer GI Joe, but we're doing them at the page puncher size, which are the yeah. small ones. But for but for it was just like I understand it. You got to take the big cash buyout that the big Fortune 500 companies are giving you, mm. and I understand the business model. And you guys are corp, you know, you guys are public, and they're public, and I understand how this works. It just would be nice. It's like I could just do like one super arty piece for it. Right. And then just go, that's it. I'm done. I'm out. So, but yeah, just to uh, scratch that itch. Yeah. Yeah. Just it. that's it. Just to say, what if, if you ever did give it to me, what if this is what it kind of would look like, but that's it. Well, I've seen you draw Batman and the crazy like job you do on his cape and stuff. So it's uh, I can only imagine that a man who spent that much time drawing a spider web would put detail in that kind of detail into everything else, including that amazing spawn HBO show, which blew me the fuck away that's another that's another area that you uh went into because prior to that superhero movies and television shows were kind of very kiddie you know very kiddie but spawn yeah. is something you could turn on as a 50 year old and tell everybody that you watch it and feel nothing but you know feel feel dignity <laughs> as opposed to yeah, yeah i watch this thing where it's the same thing every week it's like no spawn went deep and the voice of keith david still yeah yeah, you know, makes my every time uh, you hear it to me. Every time uh, I hear it, that's fun, right? Yeah, like, I don't, yeah, know, I don't, care. I don't like, care what are you doing. I'm just like that's fun. Uh, uh, the animation is no different than what I did when I sort of took over drawing uh, Spider Man or starting help start with my my, my pal's image or um, starting a toy company. 
I'm always looking for like, what are they, where are they leaving gaps? Right. Mm -hmm. So again, I, I, I've never invented anything wholly original, uh, but what I've done because other people have done it is that you just add the, the, the sexy on top of what already exists. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, an easy example of that is, uh, you know, Cadillac had the audience of, you know, their average buyer is like 58, 59, I think, in the report they came out with. And they were wondering how they could sell a Cadillac to uh, a younger generation. And they couldn't because it goes to dad's car. And then right. somebody basically ripped the body off, right? Kept everything else the same. And then put the Escalade body on it, fertilized it with paint, put the big bling on it. And all of a sudden you got you got dudes buying it, right? So they 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 took what was already there and they just sexed it up, right? Steve mm -hmm. Jobs, I said before, they came late to the game with the phone. Late to the yeah. game with the phone. And their phone pretty much did everything that every other phone at that point, smartphone, was doing on the marketplace, except for one thing. You had to hit plastic button when you said, hi, mom, and you text. And right. there's, you touch glass. Yeah. When you, when you type, hi, mom, you still had to type and hit the same, but one was glass. And one was plastic, and that was it. That was the game changer. You're yeah. touching glass. Oh my yeah. God, you're touching glass. Yeah. I'm in the fucking Jetsons. Holy shit. This is yeah. the future. But, Back to the future, it's, too. Uh, it's true because I remember I had a Blackberry, and I remember I had a Blackberry, and they were the shit. Everybody used Blackberries. It was yeah, the, sure. it's a Blackberry. Like every, and I, Blackberries were awesome. And then that iPhone, it was just like, right. I mean, they had a pinch room, too, that was kind of cool. But that was it. Those are the two things he added to something that had already been in the marketplace that the, that the leaders that had already done there. So I keep trying to tell people, stop trying to worry about inventing something brand new. Here's the tough thing about inventing something brand new. It takes a ton of money then to educate people about your new thing because they're not in a groove, right? Mm -hmm. But if you take what they're already in a groove and just make it cooler, funner, uh, more comfortable, like whatever. I mean, whatever. I, we could look at a hundred things just in your room. Just go, hey, how about that, 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 that? If you can figure that piece out, then people will give you a lot of credit, right? And that's all I did to some extent with uh, what we did with the comic books and what we did with uh, the toys. And then when we went and did the HBO, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks that the, the cartoons equal Saturday morning. Let's not do it. Why don't we take and do real true drama r-rated stuff the movie had come out i mean because the movie came out and the animation came out about the same time the movie yeah. pg-13 the hbo they had tags on it and it came out at midnight for a reason and it had every tag every tag on it which was violence nudity cursing you know, like what i forget what they were right drug second rock and roll right i mean it was all the things that they just have to give you the warning in advance and it's it sort of shocked people uh, because again, like with the toys, like they could have done it, but you come in and all of a sudden you do a little change and boom, thunderbolt, right? Mm -hmm. Touch glass, not plastic, thunderbolt. Um, and so, and and I I remember intentionally, there were two moments with there were two moments with it when I was first negotiating with HBO and they wanted to do it. My one big question to them was, and it wasn't a joke. And it wasn't meant to be snide. It actually had a purpose for the question was, I said, hey, so you, you want to do an adult thing? Okay, because it's an adult thing and you're going to do it. So can I say fuck? Right yeah. now, yeah. it wasn't that I wanted to and it wasn't that I needed to. It was I wanted to hear what their answer was and how long they took. Mm -hmm. And very and like without hesitation, they went, yeah, sure. I don't, I, I, I don't know why not. Right. right. And, and so I and so the reason for the question was if they would let me do that, yeah, then they would let me do a lot of crazy stuff. Of course, right? yeah. So I'm like, oh man. So the first three minutes of the very first episode was all intentional, mm -hmm. which was I'm going to make it so that everybody who watches these first three minutes will understand in three minutes that this is not Saturday morning cartoons, right? right. By far. Yeah. And so what you were going to get was two groups of people. You're going to get Harriet and you're going to get Fred and they were going to be like 72 and they were going to sit down and they were going to turn it on. And then all of a sudden some guys are going to come on animation <laughs> and start shooting people <laughs> through the head and dropping that bomb. And, and they were going to go, Oh my God. Oh my God, Harriet. Oh my God. 
Phone bill, tell them not to watch it. Tell them not to watch it. Now, I wasn't aiming for them. I was watch, I was aiming more for basically the Ryan group. Right. That, that if they they it was Friday night. So this is the college kids. They've had a couple of wobbly pops. They're having a nice time. They go back. They're sort of relaxing. And then it comes on and they see the exact same thing. And they actually had the same reaction. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Get Fred on the phone. Except for right. the opposite reason. They mm-hmm. actually wanted him to turn it on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So so it quickly, I just wanted to just go like, if you don't get it, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to get you out real quickly. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. And if you do get it then then buckle up because we're going to go for a ride here right and and because there wasn't anything out there that was doing that now there's lots of shows out well, there i was going to say you know you you paved the way for um well like, invincible that's for invincible, fucking sure <laughs> like a show like the boys would never have existed if yeah like spawn all image there. comics by the way yeah for what's worth but everything just, we yeah. just mentioned yeah but yeah. i'm just saying like I, it, it really mm. yeah. the television show i've been i've been i've been fortunate gentlemen and and, and i don't know why <laughs> this is the head scratcher I, yeah i'm doing what seemed kind of obvious at its face to me mm of doing it and then you do it and because nobody was kind of doing it in any meaningful way before you then you get all this credit for doing something that was like i don't like my frustration is there should have been a thousand toys that look like mine when i and then if there were i wouldn't have gotten the toy business and if there were tv shows like that i wouldn't have i wouldn't have like done that animation either because i'm a geek too i at some point i just go nobody's feeding my appetite creative appetite Mm. so i'll just go and do it myself and the thing is that my creative appetite is not really unique it it there's a whole swath of people not only in in north america but around the 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 world times that that sort of want to eat the same cheeseburger and fries right i'm just i'm just doing stuff that of course i'm 25 this is what i want of course I'm 30. This is what I want. Of course, I'm 35. This is what I want, right? Like, I don't mm. want the things that a 75 year old want. And I don't want the things that a five year old want, right? Like, like right here, this is why we have to eventually leave the house at some point because at some point, our, we have different hairstyles and different clothes and different music and different tastes of our friends and TV shows than our parents. And we, does, we just, we got to separate at some point and just go, I love, I love you, mom and dad. I just can't live with you forever because we're just going to keep clashing and that's okay. So you, you do your thing. You watch, eat, dress, whatever, and listen to whatever music you want to. I'm going to do the same. And then, and then we'll just, we'll, we'll just love each other from a little bit from a distance. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's the, it's sort of a natural progression that everybody wants to just be their own individual. Yeah. So I'm just like, they're not feeding it to me. I guess I got to create some of it. And and luckily I've, I've had the opportunities and, and good talented people to help me do it. So, uh, but I don't know. I don't, like, I, again, I, I, my life would have been easier if somebody else had got there first. So I wouldn't have had to done it. So. Well, you have a lot of, you have a, clearly you have a lot of passion with it. I myself uh, am a musician and I was in between bands and I was, I wanted to sing a karaoke song and I waited like two hours and then eventually I sing it. And the DJ dickhead gets his friend to sing it with me and the, and he's ruining it. And I'm like, I've waited two hours to sing this fucking song. And then after that, I'm thinking, I'm a semi-professional musician. Why the fuck do I care about karaoke? And I started a new band the next day. Um, was there any particular moment that made you say, I'm not just going to be the artist. I'm going to make my toys and I'm going to be in control of it. I'm going to make my cartoon. I'm going to be in control of it. Was there a certain thing that you know made you pull that trigger like a certain moment a certain karaoke song if you will um but... well 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 uh the toys uh i own that company 100 percent. like and i was able to make every decision um the animation was at hbo so you need people mm. on the corporate level to basically give you enough rope uh uh ho- hopefully so that you can you know do good yeah. things with it not too much that you basically hang yourself, yourself with it yeah so the so, so each one was a little bit of a move, but the it's always easier if you have a group of people that are helping to lift the weight, right? Okay. So with HBO, of course, then I had some really good people there. Not only the the, the people that were helping me make the shows, but upper management understood too. They were they were behind it. So there was a good 
sort of group there. The, you know, ultimately the reason why we only went three season was I thought a bad corporate reason. Um, but that's just corporation. So, okay, fine. Um, and then on the toy end, here, here's where it all starts. I've got an idea. I'd like to try and do it. Can I figure out how to get this to market? How do I have to do it? And at first you look for people that are industry leaders and people who know how to do it or people that are vets and people who've been traveled down the road, because like, why do you need to basically sort of do something that's already been done by people much smarter than you? So you try that first, but it, I, I couldn't figure that out though with both in the comic books uh, of just going, I just want to, I just want to do story. Like, I look. I was doing Spider Man at Marvel, and it was the number one selling book. And all I was doing near the end was getting reprimanded because I wasn't doing it their way. Right. Even though I had take taken it from from number twenty two to the top, and then they gave me a new book, and I set literally a record that still stands today for the most sales by a single creator at any corporation, Marvel, DC, or any other. Those like I I set the record, and it still wasn't good enough. Right? They just it just wore me out. So I want, I just want to do stuff and not have to constantly be in a battle. So again, you go, well, how do you do it? You have to start your own. And in the toys, I met with literally, I met with all the public companies, right? All the, the ones that you would think of the Hasbro's and Mattel, the playmates, the, mm-hmm. you know, whoever the other, they were out of that point. I'm, I'm missing a couple, but I, I met with like five or six and then, but I just didn't get a sense. My simple pitch to them, I, I think we need to do, non-traditional toys and sell them in non-traditional places mm-hmm. right and if you remember we would sell our stuff in babbages and kb toys and and virgin records and tower records and all these kinds of places sure. too um but the subject matter was conducive to the people shopping in those stores um including music and what so at some point you just sort of go ah you look left you look right nobody's willing to basically do it You've only got two choices at that point. You either make shit toys or no, you either just <laughs> shut up and just go. That's, this is just how, it, this is the system or you do something about it. I'm, I'm that like, I'm not the guy who bitches at the water cooler and does nothing. Right. I'm the guy who basically goes, no, I'm going to spend my own time, effort and money. And I was fortunate that I was able to basically do that to go and just do this on my own and find people that can help with it. And so it's, it's plastic. It's basically plastic in a shape. It's not, it's not, I'm, I wasn't building a rocket ship to go to Jupiter. I was making like a cool little toy out of clay. I mean, it's not complicated. They want you to think it's complicated. It's not complicated, right? Comic books at its core is ink on paper, mm-hmm. ink on paper. It's more complicated than that a little bit, but it, but that's kind of it. And toys are just plastic in the shape. We used to do them when we were younger. I used to have like these little jello molds of dinosaurs and you pour the jello and then you turn them out and go, man, it looks like a T-Rex. That's cool. Yeah. Toys are kind of that, just a little more complicated, right? But it's like you, you can do it. So I, I guess I'm just too naive and I get too angry at times. And I've got, luckily enough, I've got money sitting around. I can just go fine i'll just do it myself because i don't want to like if i'm not going to do it myself then i have to concede that the system has to do it for me right i can't work at marvel and complain for the next 20 years i don't understand this i don't understand this i don't understand this like you're working for marvel that that's the machine and yeah. that's the way it goes good bad or indifferent and i did it right but if you if you're asking for more you can't stand on the left and ask for something on the right. You just can't. So I I just hit moments, and it usually was anger, sadly, where I just go, God damn it, I'll just do it myself, right? Like, I had no ambitions to be in the toy business, never. Like, when mm-hmm. I was growing up, when I was working at Marvel, that was never that was never a piece of it. It's just that once we started Image, which was our own thing, and now I have to create my own character, Spawn, and he had to come out. Then I set pillars for myself. And the four pillars were video games, TV, movies, and toys. Those are the four pillars for me. Right. And, mm-hmm. and I and I felt if I could pour my foundation and put those 
four pillars in there, I could build a skyscraper. Sure. Right. Because strong foundations can hold a lot. Uh, but I, and so we, we made the video game real deal real quick. We, we made the movie deal real quick and we did the HBO deal. Uh, and, and each one of those, I had varying degrees of control. Um, mm. And then, and then the toys, I, I just couldn't, I just couldn't find it. I did. I felt they were just going to put it in their machine. Like every other toy that they sell for six year old, it wasn't going to work. They were going to make the same toy, market it to the same people, put it in the same place. And, and it was going to, it was going to fail. And then they were going to hand me my brand back and it was going to be singed at the edges. Yeah. And, I, and what am I going to do? Go back now, two years later and go, Hey, I've got this brand. Remember the one that you had that didn't work. Yeah. This well, is now, that piece yeah. earlier where I was saying that you got to have success. Yeah. So I, I just got to the point where I made a phone call to somebody and I said, Hey, you got a bit of an entrepreneurial spirit yourself. How hard is it to make a toy? Mm -hmm. And then, and then he went, Oh, I, I know a couple of people. I'll make a couple of phone calls. And then oh, it starts. And, yep. and, you're, and you're off to the races and you're off to, and now all of a sudden you're making toys. Not because I, I wanted to, it because, because it either I had to, or I needed to, to be quiet about making toys. That was, that was the fork I hit for me personally. That was the fork I hit. Todd, you either got to do it yourself or you just got to, or you just got to let them do it or just shut up about making toys and find something else that you want to do. And so we, we made toys. Here we are 30 years later, still doing it. Um, I want to really thank you for taking the time to chat today. Um, it's, it's really, really nice to, to get this, this nice period of time to really, to see the story and the history of all this. Um, I know there's a lot of stuff coming up in the next year. There's one thing I wanted to ask you about in particular. Um, sure. There's a two pack that's going to be of you. <laughs> there's going to be an actual figure of you. No on way. One of your creations and you're going to be signing some of them. How are people going to be able to get those? Cause I'm sure they're going to be highly sought after. Yeah. So, so, okay. So I've been at it for 30 years. This is the second figure of me. Right? Cool. Tell me, so, tell me quickly about the first one. The first one was I did a cameo in a spawn movie. We did one. I was a bomb in the alley, so we did Todd the bomb, right? So it was technically it was one of the celebs of the movie, technically, <laughs> right? If you want to want to push it, yeah. uh, so I, I was doing my Stan Lee cameo. Yeah, uh, of course, yeah. So this one was is one of the ones you asked me at the very beginning. What are we doing as part of the 30th anniversary? This is one of them, right? And, and it just uh, came out, and we sold out real quick. And right. what the two pack is that you get you get me and you get me my hat my spawn hat and my shirt that i'm always wearing i think you can even swap out the shoes so you can be uh in socks or bare feet because that, that's how i walk around and then i the fun part about it to me isn't that you get a todd toy big deal um is that i'm I, one of the props is I, I got a sketch right a sketch pad a sketch pad and on the sketch pad there's a drawing of the original spawn i did when i was 16. oh wow and, wow well and, when you were and, 16 and uh yeah because i created spawn when i was like wanting to break in the comic book. Um, and then the toy that is in the two pack is based on that drawing, the original OG. Oh my God. Drawing, right. So it's, so people look at it to go, how come that's wrong? And that's wrong. And that this is sort of going back to the detective uh, 27. How yeah. come that's wrong? And it's like, well, it's technically a purple wrong for the professional spawn, but for the 16 year old original concept drawing, of Spawn when I was a kid because I did a comic book of it and if you turn the box over you see the original drawing and then you see the um, the like a page of the comic book that I had done with Spawn in it I I think they made a mistake in the packaging saying Todd did it in 1997 1997 I'm five years into image no 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 1977 it was okay, first. okay. that was, wow. when I, was I was 16 at that point so uh, but that it's sort of a it's sort of a a little fun two pack for some people that are kind of into knowing a little bit geeky and nerdy and stuff like that. It's a little odd little sort of wink that we, we, we had. And then some of them, uh, they, they all come with a card, but some of them, I, I put my autograph on, on the cards. Yeah. So that's going to be like random in, in whatever, if you get one, you might get an autograph one. I, I, I don't know. Some, um, I'm trying to think on that one. I don't know if it was random or whether okay. sometimes we do what we call the gold label. Right. And then you know you're getting it, but then there's a bit of an upcharge for the for the autograph in it or something. I, mm. I and we sort of mix and match it, so I don't know exactly how that one went down. But there's there that that's what that's about, and it's just it's just sort of goofy history 
stuff. So I still have that 40 page comic book. At some point, somebody's saying, you need to remaster that because nobody's ever seen it. And, uh, and, and ink over your 16 year old self and, and color it with today's technology and put it out and blah, 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 blah. And so maybe, maybe for issue 400, that'd be the, the back half of issue 400. Who knows? I love it. I love it. Well, listen, um, whatever you're doing, keep doing it because we've been fans for a long time and, um, and more power to you, man. It's, it's great when you see someone that's not afraid, you know, both Ryan and I come from a, a bit of a DIY punk background where we're mm -hmm. used to doing things ourselves, like the podcast, you know, being, a, I was a broadcaster for 14 years with Bell Media and, and, and in June, I was no longer with them, but I had started this podcast two years before that, knowing that one day things would yeah. change, but I won't need them because all I need is this and my buddy over there and people like you to talk to. And that's all that matters because it's the conversation that matters. And at the end of the day, what really matters is the work, you know, getting wrapped up in the results is one thing, but the work is what matters. And you can tell by the stuff you do that you care about the work. Um, yeah. So that Let me, can I, I'm going to add one thing too, is that as I've gotten older, which I am, yeah, uh, and the career has gotten longer, one of the things that I admire now about people and in many fields, many, many fields are survivors. Yeah. Because all, almost every industry is a dog eat dog sort of world and, and some are vicious, right? So, so I've said before, like when I look at like Rolling Stones or Ozzy or even Kiss or whatever, I'll, we can have a debate all day long on whether their music should be ranked high, low or whatever. I'll, we can have that debate another day. Mm -hmm. What, 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 what is staggering to me that in an industry that's shark infested, that you've seen a million careers go up and down, that their bell curves are like this, that, that there are some people that have figured out 50, 40 year arcs yep. that, that, and they've survived all the trends and all the shifts and to some extent, different generations and they're still not only did this, they survive, but and here's the steep mountain. One mountain is steep, which is surviving. The second one, which is even steeper, is being relevant. Yeah. Yeah. Like 40 years, 50 years and relevant. Because I know how steep that mountain is because I ride it every single day and I go, it's hard. It's a hard thing. It's when you start getting older. So longevity is its own victory. Yeah. Right. 100%. And and when I when I meet long term survivors, I don't care what they do, man. I I am in awe of them because I know the blood, sweat, and tear it takes to basically have accomplished what they've done. Right. And so I've sort of gotten like a fraction of it, and they were in much 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 bigger eyes, lots of people, and I I I'm in awe of it because they had to just grind through it too. Uh, yeah. Good, bad, or indifferent. You never, you never get anywhere in a straight line, and they they have stories to tell too, right? So, uh, but that's it. So I now I think I, I I sort of I've gotten to the point in my life where I've been around long enough now where I can actually screw up and people will give me a bit of a pass, right? Where early yeah. in your career you you don't have that luxury, but now they're like, ah, you got a body of work. Ah, it was just a bad day, Todd. Today's Monday. Don't worry about. It. You, you'll do better tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, yeah. and then you go from there. So, uh, you get, you get some insulation from it, but it, but again, that those overnight successes that take decades to get there. Right. So. Yeah. Well, you can always measure a human being that's climbing what they think is the top of Everest. And when do they get to the top? They see there's more to climb. You look at that site with hunger in your eyes and, and, you know, keep climbing while other people are just like, I thought I made it. Oh, oh this no, well, is all here, I had here, to do. Here's sadly, you guys know, because you guys are music, like we're, I think all creative people have some degree of neuroses, right? Oh yeah. Oh we, yeah. We, we, we all have it. I, yeah. One of the great inventions in the world besides the wheel is a thing called the deadline, right? Because otherwise we'd all be working on our very first project still. Yeah. Um, but the neuroses comes that we have so many ideas spinning in here. And we, we know that we know intellectually to some degree that we're going to go to our grave and only get 10% out, right? And that's frustrating. That's part of the neuroses that yeah. you just can't get it out fast enough and do yeah. anything about it. Uh, and then and then the other part of getting it out of your head is that once it is out of the head, the few that do trickle out 
you're then striving for the elusive perfection. Yeah. And, and, and we will all three of us here and every other creative person, I don't care what the category is, will go to our graves chasing. We will never actually hold it in our hand. It will always be just like a foot away. We think at moments and, yeah. and, but that's it. It, it drives us our entire career. Uh, but it's natural because again, it's, we do stuff, you guys do stuff that is easy to do because it's your personality, right? People, right. people give us credit, give me credit for doing stuff that is second nature. Cause it's just how I've been since I fell out of the womb. Right. And so they're projecting their personality on what I do. And to me, there was no other option. But like, what are you talking about? Of course I would do that. Right. And they're going, man, that's tenacious. What? What? Are you, what? what are you talking about? No, I'm not going to push me around. Like, again, no. it's person. I, I found that personalities now factor into this equation. You can give the blueprint to a thousand people, but only eight of them might have the personality to actually be able to do anything with the blueprint. Right before I go out, Todd, just something really fun for the Internet. Um, yep. Todd, what do you listen to when you draw? What's what's what are, what are the favorite bands? What are what what's the music of uh, Todd McFarlane's uh, inspiration? You know, it's interesting because I, I I never really I never bought records or anything. My brothers did, so I would borrow some of theirs at time. Yeah. But uh, the 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 music, the only real consistent music that I listen to are like sound scores mm. uh, yep. that have no words because I'm I'm usually like writing and plotting. Mm. And and typing and I can't listen to words. Some people can't. I can't listen to words while I'm writing different words. Right. 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 So I listen to mood setting stuff that is, you know, just to me is sort of haunting chimes and stuff like that. Like the theme to uh uh oh man, what's the movie? I'm gonna The I'm Exorcist. Gonna... No, no, no. Uh, you said chimes. <laughs> so I was thinking about the bells. bells. Yeah. Shoot, I'm gonna, I, I, the name of it is uh, Inuratu, uh from uh, it's the movie. Remember the movie with the the kid that falls down the hole with drugs, and his mom falls down the hole with the drugs. Uh, shoot. Anyways, because you like everybody uses it for a lot of their TikToks and stuff like that. But okay. it's sort of Gregorian chants and stuff okay, like that. Yeah. Just, just haunting weird like like you, it puts you in the mood in about two seconds of going okay like even that the you know that theme at the beginning of sicario right yeah yep. just, you just hear it and you just go oh, sicario right or yeah or something it just sounds like something sinister is happening i i usually put that on and then much to my wife's chagrin i i put it on loop okay right and so when i put it on loop then it becomes eventually white. No, I don't even know I'm listening to it because I'm, I'm just so into my writing at that point. And then somebody go, you want lunch? And it'd be like, and then all of a sudden you sort of hear it and you come back to the world again. But it's, yeah. it's, it's my way of disappearing into it. And when I listen to certain music, it, I'm like Pav, Pavlovian dog that I like. As soon as I hear it, I like I, I feel like I got to be typing. Right. I got to I got to be writing or something like that. So it's a good it's a good exercise that if anytime I, I need to write, I just I plug the music on first and then I go <laughs> and my brain is now triggered to go. Oh, you got to write with that music all the time. So love it. Love it. Awesome. Love it. I, I highly recommend a band called Carpenter Brute that uh, Jason showed me on a road trip when our car was running out of gas in New York State in the middle of the night. It uh, it set a mood. I gotta say, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Carpenter Brood, it's amazing and it inspires me to very much to. like eighties yeah. soundtrack music, you know, like a lot of stuff you'd know from eighties films. If you ever listen to another another one that's great is like anything that John Carpenter scored, like all the Carpenters. Oh, scored. yeah, yeah, yeah. So good to listen to. Yeah, all yeah. That instrumental stuff is just yeah. No, no, no. Now there's I mean, I've I've found people on the internet that do yeah. it now, right? The, I mean, there's so much good stuff that yeah. it doesn't even have to be from a movie per se. There's just talent out there that I just go man, I like that. That's cool. I'm just going to listen to that for endless, endless hours at a time. Uh, Todd, uh, everybody that's on the podcast, um, we send them a uh, heartbeat hot sauce, which is a Canadian oh, there you go. hot sauce company from Thunder Bay, Ontario. So we'll get all your information. We'll make sure they send you some. Um, they're awesome. And okay. they're from Thunder Bay. So they're Canadian. And all right. It's good hey, and that, and uh, it just came to me, the movie I was talking about, Requiem for a Dream. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 
Keith David's right. got a good Keith David's got a good scene in there too. Right. So again, that kind that theme, right? I just put that on loop and and it gets me in the mood for the worlds I create a lot. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, again, Todd, thank you so much for taking the time, man. It really means a lot. All right. You guys be good. Thanks for doing what you guys are doing here. Like we're we're there's a lot of levels to geek them, right? There you gotta you gotta make it. You gotta you gotta get somebody to put it where the customer sees it. You got to get people to talk about it and give the news about it. Yeah. And then, and then you've got to get then the final customer to actually pick it up uh, and take it home. So there's, there's, we're, we're all sort of entwined with each other, whether we know it or not. Sometimes some of us get a little bit higher on the horse and we shouldn't because if one of those pieces goes away, it, it, it tumbles the cards. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I hope to get to see you doing some stuff with the Zarface guys. Cause Seamus Esoteric is a great guy. He's a good friend of mine. He was very right. excited when you when you took the time to talk to him in uh, in New York at the New York Comic Con. Okay, and and big day, strong strong day, big day, <laughs> big strong man. Strong man. We gotta give we gotta give him gotta give him props. Yeah. All right, man. We'll talk You're to amazing. you soon. All right, You're amazing, good. Todd. Thanks. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, man. Bye. 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 Well, that couldn't have gone better. Holy shit. <laughs> that was fun. All right, everybody. So we're recording the outs for this interview the second it finished. Like this, yeah. we never do that. Yeah. This, we're we're going to get we, the. We literally direction. just got off off with Todd McFarland. Um, Ryan, we talked to him for like an hour and a half or more. Uh, Good. Yeah. I know. It was awesome. So um, every now and then as an editor, I'm like, when you're like, oh, the interview was like 45 minutes. I'm like, oh, dude. Yeah. And then when it comes to this, when it came to Andre Gower or Monty Melnick from the, the Ramones tour manager, I'm not sure when we're putting this out. I guess we're going to attempt to put this one out as soon as possible. It's crazy, man. Yeah. I had no idea he created Spawn when he was 16. I know. I know. And what now I really, fuck? really want like it, I, I really, really want the, that toy of the two pack. That's so personal, but dude, thanks so much for the Batman uh, purple gloves. But just those little details. Yeah. There's a Masters, yours, of the, yeah. Thank you so joking. much. You're getting there's it. a Masters of the Universe cartoon out now um, called Masters of the Universe uh, Revolution. Yeah, the Kevin and there's a, that you love. Yeah, and there's a point of it where he comes out wearing a mullet, and there's this little wizard guy, and that's from the Masters of the Universe Dolph Lundgren movie. Yeah. So they paid a bunch of homages to that movie, and you know. I'm a key man poser, hands yeah. down. But even I know that they're tipping their hat to all these things. Yeah. I love it when people do that. So the idea that Todd has a figure of himself and this original concept of Spawn is the coolest fucking thing I've ever yeah. heard. No, no, no. I mean, I I, I didn't want to ask him, but yeah. we have to get those. We, we, got, need, we have to. I, I need one of those for sure. My blood type needs one of those. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, um, thank wow. you so much for, for tuning in to uh, this yeah. episode. It was so much fun. Um, we want to thank our friends over at Heartbeat Hot Sauce, the heartbeat of the Rockman Power Hour. So check them out over at heartbeathotsauce.com and use our promo code ROCKMAN20 right down there and you'll get 20% off your entire order. Thanks to our friends over at Studio House Designs. Um, and thank you to our new friends from Audio Technica Canada who are uh, providing us with all our audio needs for uh, the podcast moving forward. Yeah. So, um, when you are watching this, we have officially switched over to Audio Technica. So thank you to them. Audio Technica Canada are, are, are a brand like I had mentioned before in our, in our post a, a few weeks back. They're a brand that we've admired from afar for a long time, and they're helping us bring this to a whole other level. So, um, you know, love everything about them. And uh, thank you so much, Audio Technica Canada, and to our friend Mike Marino for helping yeah. us with uh, with getting this going and uh man just stoked Super dude stoked. i'm so stoked not only about the interview but also about this new gear too yeah because i gotta say like the headphones are awesome i felt good about talking yeah. like you ever feel you ever yeah. have mics so yeah. good that it makes you feel co more confident yeah no no for sure I, also the arm everybody you know like it's yeah. just nice to have this space i feel Ooh, free i feel free like i can just go like this now um, yeah, like now I want to podcast every day because some of the setups we've had before with Mike Arms yeah. off camera kind of like taking up half the room or just all just the setup right now, Audio Technica, thank you very much because literally it sounds great. It feels great. The arm is awesome. Anybody who is starting to podcast, I cannot recommend 
this arm <laughs> so much because when you don't have one of these, yeah, it's uh it truly is a game changer. And this is coming from somebody who's been recording interviews for years. Uh, this is my favorite setup we've ever had. Yeah, no, yeah, hands down. So yeah. thank you to Audio Technica. Uh and thank you to all of you for watching. Uh we're looking forward to uh continuing on this amazing journey with you. If you're enjoying the podcast, please subscribe, uh like our posts, share them and uh make sure that you tell your friends about what we're doing because we appreciate that without you we don't have anything going on and um and again thank you for joining us on the journey and we'll see you next time on the rockman power hour Hey, thanks so much for watching the podcast. We really appreciate your support. And if you're enjoying the podcast, click this link right over here to watch the next episode and click right over here and subscribe. And that way you won't miss anything.